Okay, Marcus Palladino, talking to me from Tofino, BC. Welcome to Permastoke, dude. How are you, man? I'm great, man. Thanks so much for having me, Derek. This is, uh, right this is very exciting for me. Awesome. I'm so stoked to have you here, man. So, so Marcus Palladino, you don't hear the name Marcus too much. So do you specifically go by Marcus as opposed to Mark? <laughs> yeah, I've just been going by Marcus my whole life. Um, because I think my name, it has a C instead of a K. So I oh, think okay. that's why I never went by Mark. Because I would uh, feel Mark with a C has a bit of a French connotation to it. Yeah, So my whole, my whole life, people have been calling me Marcus. And I've just, that's how I introduced myself. It's funny because I think the only people who call me Mark are like my parents or my sister. But it's more of like a shortened nickname than actually calling me Mark. Does that oh, make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because kind of my sister's it, yeah. name is Francesca, and we just keep oh, okay. calling her Fran. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, everyone just calls me Marcus. Francesca Palladino. So that yeah. sounds like super Italian to me. Yes, it's super Italian. So okay. she, <laughs> my dad is, uh, my dad is from Italy, and okay. she was the firstborn. So she got the super Italian name, which is Francesca okay. Antonietta Palladino. Wow. And I was the second born, so I got the Canadian name, which is Marcus Arthur Palladino. <laughs> yeah, really? Wow. They really yeah. uh, went a different direction with that one. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I right think uh, if I had been born first, I think they were going to name me Mario. I think uh, that's what I told that. me a long time ago. But yeah. uh, I think they didn't want uh, kids to tease me because of the Mario Brothers and the video games, right? So. Yeah, you would have been born after that came out. So yeah, you yeah, would have totally. been It was to very that. hot at the time in 1990. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, could have been worse. Could have been Luigi. Could have been Luigi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. All right, dude. Well, hey, how has the surf been out in Tofino lately? Yeah, surf's been good. It's uh, We're kind of heading into spring season right now, mm -hmm. so there's been a lot of wind and a lot of sunshine. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, it's less consistent than it is in the winter and the swell kind of drops down. But, you know, with summer approaching, we're kind of getting into uh, south swell season, mm -hmm. which is always really exciting. But yeah, for now, I find this time of year is really transitional for me because the waves, not that they're not fun, but like... I think we just get so spoiled in the winter mm. that as soon as spring comes, I kind of put down the camera and just start surfing a lot more myself. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I like to try and keep as busy as I can anyway in this time of year. So winter season with the big waves, is that when you really try to get the photos? Yeah, I would say fall and winter are yeah. definitely like those six months of the year. I'm kind of like head down, super focused. I'm just like trying to get the best waves possible. Just like, watching the forecast like it's the stock market and just yeah. trying to get as much work as I can done because I know it's going to end eventually and I know we're going to have another six months of like you know spring and summer and which are fun in their own way yeah. like, like I said I really like surfing in the spring but summer in Tofino can be a little bit hectic and it's pretty yeah. much flat and the wind is just howling on shore the whole time so Last year, I was talking to, you know, Noah and, and a few people from out in Tofino, and I was getting a read on, uh, you know, what Tofino was like last summer because of COVID. So as things are kind of getting closer to that season this year, where do you think Tofino falls in with the whole COVID stuff? Are, are you guys expecting business as usual, maybe even more than last year, or are they hyping up restrictions? I've really not been paying attention to what's going on out there, so. Well, all of Tofino as a community, uh, we're getting our vaccines this month. Oh, okay. Because um, technically we're a rural community, and I think that was part of the distribution, was that they're gonna take care of the rural communities first, because we have such um, like limited access to like healthcare and stuff. Yeah. Um, but as for like summer, I think it's, it's not going to be business as usual, but I feel like it's going to be a really busy summer um, yeah. just because people are kind of like tired of sitting around at home and they just kind of want to get out and go for a surf, go for a drive and, you know, come check out the town. And that's awesome. Um, yeah. But I think people just need to be mindful of that, you know, we are still in the middle of a pandemic and we are slowly coming out of it. And, you know, just because we're getting our vaccines doesn't mean it's quite over yet, but yeah, yeah, I think it'll just take time. Are you keeping six feet apart in the water, man, from all the surfers? 
I'm trying to anyway. I mean, sometimes people come paddle up to you and they want to say hi and you kind of, because of the current, you end up drifting a little closer together, but yeah, yeah. yeah, I feel like everyone's pretty good at keeping their distance though. Nice. All right, man, let's get into it, dude. Marcus, tell me how you got into photography. What sparked that interest for you in your life? So I got into photography in probably in the middle of high school. My sister, Francesca, um, she was the the one that- super Italian, yep. The super Italian, yeah. She (laughs) was the one that told me to join the photography class. Okay. Because I think it's like in grade 10 that in BC anyway, that's when you get to start like picking alternative classes to do. Oh, your electives, yeah. Yeah, the electives, thank you. Um, Yeah, so she convinced me to pick photography because it's an easy A and the teacher was super chill. And I thought uh, that's yeah. perfect. So I convinced all my friends to do it too. Oh, nice. And um, yeah. And then, but once we got our uh, class schedules, all of my friends were in the photography class for the next semester. Uh, so I was the only one in the first semester of photography class, which didn't have my friends in it. So I didn't have anyone to goof off with. Yeah. No distractions. Uh, yeah. So I actually had to sit there and like learn about photography, which I ended up really enjoying and kind of, you know, taking to. Yeah. So, and you grew up in Nanaimo, correct? Yeah, I grew up in Nanaimo on the east side of Vancouver Island. Right on. So you were born in Vancouver, but you grew up in Nanaimo, and, which is literally only like, what, three-hour drive from Tofino, would you say? Yeah, and, yeah. Nanaimo is about a two-and-a-half, three-hour drive two from half, Tofino. Yeah. But I didn't actually go to Tofino until I was 18 years old. Wow. Yeah, so it's weird to think that I lived so close to Tofino, but it never really, you know, hit me to go check it out. And were you even aware of the surfing scene in Tofino at that time in your youth? No, I had no, no okay. idea what, what was going on over there. I didn't realize we had such an amazing subculture that was a two and a half hour drive away. Okay, so you're growing up in Nanaimo, you're, you're eating, out, you're chewing on those Nanaimo bars, everything's <laughs> cool. So what changed, man? What happened with that photography class that kept you going with that? Well, you know, I was never very academically inclined in school. Um, Like I did, I wasn't like failing every class, but I wasn't, you know, a straight A student. Yeah. And photography, I really enjoyed it and I had fun Mm -hmm. doing it. And it was great to be creative. And I ended up getting an A in that class. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is something I'm good at. It can bump up my GPA. So I may as well just keep taking it. Right. And I don't know. It's like, as soon as I got to grade 12, everyone was talking about what they wanted to do after high school, um, which was such a weird concept for me because I had had no idea what I wanted to do. Right. So um, like one of my favorite teachers had said, find what you love to do and find a way to get paid for it. Mm. And at the time I really loved photography. So I thought, okay, try and get paid for that. (laughs) Like it was as simple as that. Right. So, Sometimes uh, that naivety is really works in our favor, though, sometimes, you know, the less you know, uh, the less boundaries there can be sometimes to pursuing something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the beauty of photography is that like, there are no boundaries, really, Mm -hmm. you can kind of you have that creative freedom. That's true. And yeah, and it just kind of, I enjoyed it because it gives you a chance to kind of like, change the way your mind thinks about things. Yeah. You know, and like how just like adjusting your angle or changing your focus can kind of create like a new perspective on something that's Mm. just super ordinary. Um, And I think that's what I really liked about it. So for those of us uh, muggles or whatever you want to call us, (laughs) those of us who who don't have a photographic brain necessarily, um, what makes a good picture stand out from an average picture? Wow. I think... I think that's totally up to interpretation, right? Mm. So it's like, I can sit here and say, yeah, that photo sucks, but (laughs) someone else is going to look at it and be like, whoa, no, I love like how abstract it is, Mm. you know? So like there are definitely, and you know, I've done workshops with like elementary school kids before on photography. And that's something I kind of bring up is that like, um, it's all a matter of perspective Mm. and any photo is a good photo as long as, you're trying to take it with intention and creativity. You know what I mean? So yeah. as long as you're using your eye, like. The, so the, rule of, so rule of thirds, uh, the golden hour, you know, all these kind of things, they have yeah. their, they have their place, but then they can also 
you also don't want to get too mathematical about it all either, right? And lose that freedom, that spur of the moment, um, capturing something that you might not have if you had had too many restrictions going on. Yeah, and I think it's good to have guidelines, like the rule of thirds and things like that, and okay. things that kind of keep you in place. But, you know, I think having the creative freedom is really important. So, Right on, man, right yeah. on. So, you know, so you, you went to high school, you were doing photography there. So how did you continue educating yourself around photography? Did you go to school? Did you t take some... Uh, watch some YouTube videos. What was your secret to success? Yeah, I ended up going to school for photography. Mm -hmm. So I went to North Island College in Courtney. Okay. And uh, yeah, at the time I was really into snowboarding. So that was mm -hmm. kind of my like focus and snowboarding, or sorry, the mountain, Mount Washington is our local hill in Vancouver Island. And it was 30 minutes away from that college. Okay. So that's why I went there. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I was really kind of I didn't really know what I wanted to do with photography. I just knew I wanted to do it. And then mm. while I was there, I kind of clued in that snowboard photography might be my path. Okay. It kind of like filled, you know, it, it filled every need I wanted in life, you know, getting to be outdoors, getting to be creative, getting to, you know, hang out with friends. Yeah. And Anything. you're around some real adrenaline and action, eh? Yeah, totally. Um, and it's, it's cold and I've always mm. been more comfortable in colder climates than warmer climates. Nice. Ironically. So a little foreshadowing. Yes, absolutely. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> you could say I was very comfortable in the cold. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I thought I was going to be a snowboard photographer. That was kind of my dream and ambition. And then I moved to Tofino for the summer just mm. cause you know, you can't snowboard in the summer. Okay. And that's when everything kind of clicked. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to be. So you were going to Tofino, but now what was your impression or expectation of Tofino at that time? I had no expectation. I didn't oh, know okay. what I was. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, being 20 years old, I just wanted to go have a fun summer and oh, okay. make some friends and just hang out. Right. I had no ambition of being a surf photographer when I moved to Tofino. Gotcha. I mean, Were you I, working at one of the hotels or something? I was, yeah. I got a job oh, okay. at a beachfront resort and I lived in the staff accommodation. So, oh, okay. yeah. Which, was, which one were you at? Long Beach Lodge Resort, which is right on Cox oh, Bay. Oh, yeah. 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 So it was unbelievable that I got to basically live at Cox Bay. Yeah. And I got really into surfing and just like taking photos of my friends surfing. And yeah, it all kind of like. I don't want to say it all came together, but I feel like everything sort of happens, not for a reason, but like everything happens so other things can happen. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like me really just finding myself in Tofino is what kind of kept me there. Okay. Knew that there was more. And I knew that like, even if I wasn't going to be a professional photographer, I just knew that Tofino was going to be my home. Mm. Something was resonating with you there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've never felt more at home in a place where I had no idea where I was or who was there, or what was going on. I didn't even know what, so I didn't even think I would like surfing, you know, it's like the first time I went surfing, I didn't really enjoy it that much. Really? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, I didn't really have an epiphany. I just like a couple of my friends were into it and we went surfing and like, I didn't really understand how it all worked. Mm, I just yeah. remember being like pretty uncomfortable and confused. Mm, <laughs> like, okay. And like trying to get out past the break and not really understanding. And, yeah. you know, it's like, so it wasn't like love at first sight by any means, but I grew, I grew to love it for sure. Mm -hmm. And now it's like the reason I wake up in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. So when you said that you were uh, photographing your friends, so who were your friends back then? Like, were these just some, some regular surfer dudes out there? Or did you fall right in with the crowd of, you know, the, the Pete DeVries and Sepp and Noah and all the guys that you're famously photographing today. <laughs> no, that didn't come for many years. Okay. <laughs> when I first started shooting, it was all just my friends. It was guys okay. that worked at the surf shops, guys that worked in the, uh, in the resort with me. And yeah, I was just taking photos of them and having a good time. And I was really enjoying that. Like I didn't even really see myself as, you know, using, you know the photos of my friends to try and make money mm. i wasn't really focused on that i was just yeah. enjoying what i was doing and i think yeah. that's that stems from most people 
like trying to make a you know a dream become a reality is they're just enjoying what they're doing and they're not super concerned about the money just yet yeah mm-hmm. yeah i love it man it sounds like you started out really grassroots with the surf photography uh when you started taking surf photos of your friends were you trying to mimic anyone else's style were you referencing other surf photography uh or what did that look like for you well i was definitely a big fan of jeremy koreski mm-hmm. going into Tofino. Yeah. um i had seen his uh slideshow in whistler at the pro photo showdown which is like a big event where they have like some of the best action sports photographers in the world Okay. So this was like right before I ended up moving to Tofino. I got to see his slideshow and it was nine minutes of like his life's work at the time of unbelievable cold water surf photography. And uh, my mind was just blown. Right. So that's what really inspired me to like start shooting in Tofino and stuff and seeing, seeing a lot of his work. Any shots in particular that were that spoke to you? Well, Jeremy and Pete have this one fame, really kind of famous photo where it's like oh. kind of a pulled back shot from land and it's a backlit barreling wave sunrise and there's kind of trees in the foreground kind of covering the edges yeah. a bit. And With the snow-capped the mountains, tube. right? No, no snow-capped mountains in that one, but it's like oh, no, a perfect no. stand-up okay. tube. Yeah, oh, I'll, have okay. to, I'll have to send it to you. It's a crazy shot and it's okay. funny because... At the time, I remember like walking down to the beach and as I was walking, there happened to be some trees and I remember moving my head around and being like, whoa, this is the angle. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And it wasn't until years later, I was like, oh no, that was not the Uh, the beach at all. Um, So it's funny how you learn kind of the insider info once you kind of get in there. Yeah. Well, I found it really interesting, you know, myself having surfed in Tofino, you know, numerous times seeing the angles and the different breaks you're at like despite being there it felt very fresh and new and as if i hadn't seen things necessarily from all those angles i suppose that's really the magic behind photography though kind of you alluded to earlier is sort of capturing a piece of something that someone might not always notice yeah for sure and it's like you know even if i'm shooting the same beach every day which, you know, I shot the same beach for years, right? I like trying to find different angles and being creative and trying to make it look like it's a different place. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Tofino has a lot of different moods to it. Mm. Um, Well, Vancouver Island in general has a lot of different moods. And yeah, it's kind of fun to, you know, look at weather maps and kind of try and look at things in a different way. You know, whether it's a sunrise, sunset, midday, or even if it's pissing rain, it's like really fun to kind of like work with those elements. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So you're in Tofino, you're, you're taking photos of your buddies. Now you went to school for photography, but you didn't go to school for surf photography. So what was your experience like with, you know, underwater housing and, uh, you know, those pieces that are specific to surfing. I mean, were you really just learning on the job? Like walk us through that journey a little bit. You know, it's funny. I feel like I've learned more about photography and the business of photography alone, let alone surf photography itself. Mm -hmm. I've learned more about that outside of school than I ever did in school. Um, And I think school is great and it gives you the tools to, you know, be where you want to be and for me I think going to school for photography was more of like it was sort of that incentive to keep going you know because it's like I had got out a student loan to go learn how to pick up a camera right so because of that it was kind of like my oh well you know maybe I still need to keep trying to make a dig at photography and I'm glad I never gave up because I really Mm -hmm. did enjoy it and you know I still feel like if I wasn't doing it as a career I would still be doing it as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of trailed off. What was your question? (laughs) Like, I'm I'm curious to know, what was that first time like that you took the camera in the underwater housing and maybe put the flippers on? Right, right. You know, I want to know, how did you adapt to that environment and fall in love with it, essentially? I just want to know a little more about that. Well, I think it's it's different now than it it was back then because... Mm -hmm. 
it's interesting how so many people will like hit me up on Instagram and they'll ask me about my water housing and ask me about like how to keep water off the port and the fins that I use and that sort of stuff. Whereas, you know, when I started doing it, Instagram wasn't as hot as it was like, you, you know, I don't even think DMs were a thing back then. So you couldn't just like hit up your favorite surf photographer and ask a question. Yeah. And for me, I was, I'm pretty shy and I didn't want to, I didn't want to put myself out there too much. Mm. So it was a lot of trial and error. Oh, okay. And a lot of Google searches and YouTubes or <laughs> YouTube videos on oh, like okay. things to do and stuff. And so yeah, you was... are, you are reaching out to people then for guidance too much. You're saying not really. Okay. I mean, maybe I did. Someone yeah. could probably prove me yeah. wrong, but I feel like I was, I don't know. I was too self-conscious to be like, yeah. Hey, like, how do you get this to work? in the gotcha. water you know yeah and that was a big learning curve for me because mm -hmm. i'd say the first half of my surf photography will say career yeah um what was it like 10 years so like the first five years i didn't have a water housing mm -hmm. i was just shooting from the beach i couldn't oh, okay. afford one i had no money yeah. um and then when i finally saved up to buy a used one it's like the guy i bought it off i got <laughs> as much information off of him as i could while i was buying it yeah and then i was like okay now i got this dialed <laughs> So it's like, he gave me a couple like tips, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty quick. So I just had to like learn on the fly and, you know, blow a lot of shots to figure it out. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. Lots of trial and error. So what, I mean, how does one even set themselves up for a shot out there? No tripod, no steadiness. You know, waves are bashing you around. You know, t tell us a little bit about how you even, I mean, to us, man, we don't get it. How do you even do that out there? Oh, dude, I don't even get it. I've been doing really? it for okay. five, six years, and I'm still learning, you know? Oh, okay. And it's funny because you get, everyone has their own um, methods dialed on how to mm. shoot from the water. And yeah. it's funny, the second you change one thing, you have to change everything. <laughs> so it's like, I feel like, um you know so the first two and a half three years of shooting in the water i would always spit on my port whether it was long lens fish eye anything i was always spitting on it because spit okay. is what like creates this extra layer in front of you that helps the water not bead so then you can kind of shoot through it if that makes sense oh, okay and i went to hawaii and i was gonna go swim out with another surf photographer there and I started spitting on my port and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, uh, is this not what you do? <laughs> and he's like, nah, man, dry port. And I'm like, what do you mean dry port? Cause it's like, whenever I had tried the dry port, like starting out, it just like didn't work and there'd be beads of water everywhere. And okay. so it's like, he had his own tip where he was like, yeah, you take the back, the, <laughs> the grease from the back of your ear and rub it all over your port. And it, that was um, like absolutely mind blowing. And wow. so it goes to show that like everyone has their own little ways of doing it. So there's no like right and wrong answer. You just kind of have to see what works best. Yeah. And it's like, after that, I ended up getting a squeegee. So when I shoot mm -hmm. 70 to 200, I have a squeegee in one hand that I hold on to. Yeah. So when I pull it up, I give it a wipe. So there's nothing on it. Cool. But that's just, I think I'm the only guy that does that mm -hmm. around Tofino. I know yeah. there's a, there's a few other photographers that do do it. Um, I don't, I can't think of their names off the top of my head, but yeah, I'm the only guy in town that does that. And I've told people to try it, but no one will. So you're a squeegee kid and you like to spit on cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This depends on the port. So it's like fisheye, always spitting on it. Long oh, lens, okay. always squeegeeing. That's kind oh, of my okay. new method, but I guess what I'm trying to, to answer your question, it's like, it's an ever evolving, um, yeah technique you know mm. you're always trying to mix it up and see what works best so for me that works best i guess now now surf photography is pretty niche however there's enough people doing it that i mean are there any courses specifically geared to surf or even you know water or ocean photography or master classes or is it really just every man for himself figure it out it's funny. I like to think it's every man for himself figure it out, but um, it's, it's weird you mentioned that because I was actually looking up um, surf photography 
uh, workshops and classes. Yeah, okay. Because me and another surf photographer, we were talking about like creating our own workshop. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and exactly, by doing that yeah. and looking up info, we found so many like dedicated surf photography workshops. And we're like, oh, oh this okay. is a creative idea. This is something that actually happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think there's a few now. And, you know, in hindsight, that would have been so helpful back in the day. I feel like I would have learned a lot more, a lot <laughs> quicker. <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> yeah but yeah there's so many like little tricks to the trades and stuff and yeah i don't know i just i've always liked kind of figuring things out myself mm. i don't know it's maybe i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing i like to try and be independent yeah um so even when it came to like the learning curve of like the business side i was always just trying to like figure it out myself yeah, yeah. it's funny you say that man because uh for me I got a piece of advice um, not too long ago, and that advice was don't compare yourself to other people. That's and, good advice. Yeah, and I think regarding uh, what the subject matter was is that I kept pinning myself up against other people, and so I was disappointed. So I've taken that advice, and so with this podcast, for example, it's funny since I started this podcast, I have actually listened to, I've almost stopped listening to podcasts and I didn't do it on purpose. It just is kind of, I feel like right now I'm in a creating mode rather than a, a sort of listening or watching mode, I guess you could say. But at the same time, I also thought I, if I listen to Joe Rogan podcast or, you know, this or that, I'm going to start comparing myself and I'm not sure how happy I'll be with my performance. So yeah, sometimes I think it's good just to stay away from the competition and don't even let that in your peripheral and, you know, cause it'll just sort of cloud things and gets in the way of, you know, your true talent coming through. Yeah, for sure. And um, I heard this one on the Joe Rogan podcast once and it's comparison yeah. is the thief of joy. Is which is ah. Yes. And, uh, that's very relatable to me. I am constantly comparing myself to other people's mm. work and stuff, whether it's local photographers or just international guys yeah. in, uh, in countries I've never even been to. I'm like, Oh, I'm blowing it. Why aren't I shooting right now? You know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And it, it's funny because Instagram is such a blessing and a curse, but you know, it, it can be so inspiring to be just like scrolling with your thumb and seeing all these amazing photographers and photos in the world. Yeah. But at the same time, it kind of, you know, it can be detrimental to your mental health for sure. Yeah, because, okay, I'm just going to pull up my favorites here for a minute. I keep, uh, you know, some of my favorite photographers in here. I'm just going to name a few um, that I have on here. Some of these guys are Great Lakes guys, though. Okay. I got, I got Andrew Whiten. I got Christian Dahlbeck. Um, Jeremy Koreski, Kyler Voss, Marcus Palladino, Mike Calabro, Mike Killian, uh, Ryan L., Scotty Sharon. I mean, that's, I mean, right there, that's quite a bit of talent right there. I mean, that's a heavy list right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for including me in that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got a pretty solid list. So if you just heard your name, that means I'll be reaching out to you at some point to come on the podcast. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Those are the people who kind of caught my attention. So awesome. So I'm not going to understand any of this, but for the photo junkies out there, or is there a name for someone who's a real photo enthusiast, like a camera head or something? Probably just a nerd. A nerd? Okay. <laughs> so, I, feel, I feel like every photographer is a bit of a nerd, whether it's oh, like okay. the technical aspect or um, just like composition wise. I think we're all gotcha. in our own way. Okay. So for all those photo nerds out there <laughs> listening to this, maybe tell them, uh, what are some of your, what's your favorite equipment, your equipment of choice or lens or uh, things like that? Yeah. So I have the, uh, I have the one DX Mark II, um, and that's a new acquisition. I just got that in the last year and okay. it's been like my favorite camera to date. Um, mm. it's super fast. Uh, it's very big. It kind of, you gotta hold it with two hands, but oh, okay. I don't know. I'm, I've finally figured out the ergonomics of it. So it's, it's quite comfortable to carry for me now. So um, as everything essentially shrinks and becomes digital, some of these big 
bigger tools are still the ones for the job, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, it's interesting with everything going mirrorless. Mm. They're realizing that you don't need as much size as you need, as you used to. Mm. Um, so I haven't quite jumped into the whole mirrorless um, industry yet. I mean, people seem pretty psyched on it and that's cool. I think if I was starting out in photography, I would go mirrorless over digital SLR just because okay. I feel like that's kind of the way the future seems to be going. Mm. Um, but I... I'm already very well equipped with what I have. And until my equipment becomes irrelevant, I probably won't uh, make that switch. Cause it's such a similar like divide between film and digital at the time. Yeah. And now it's the divide between digital and mirrorless. So what are you, are you saying mirrorless? Like yeah, mirrorless. mirror that I look into? Yeah, so the way a digital SLR works is it kind of like bounces off of mirrors so you can kind of see through the viewfinder. Oh, okay. with mirrorless, when you look through the viewfinder, it's actually just like a digital version of what you would see. Okay. So in a lot of ways, it's like technically better because you can see your exposure through the viewfinder before you even take the photo. Okay. So there's like little things like that. I'm not too well versed on it, but I think there's a bunch of other benefits too. One of the benefits being that the camera is generally smaller. So. Okay. Yeah. Right um, as far as other equipment. Um, Shaking I, my head as if I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I barely know what I'm talking about. So. And I'm sure someone listening is going to be like, that's not how mirrorless works. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> um, yeah. And um, as far as shooting in the water, I have a CMT water housing mm. and uh, they're from California and they're kind of, they're kind of up and coming. I used to have Aquatech, but CMT is all carbon fiber. So it's super light. So that okay. like kind of big heavy body that I was just talking about is just feels like a feather when I'm shooting in the water. It's quite yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah. And how would you, what would you describe your photographic style as? Oh man, I've been asked that so many times and I can't yeah. come up with an answer. So why don't I ask you, what do you think that my photographic style is? Because it's like, I don't know what my style is because I'm just shooting it. Whereas like, I think a viewer, like a third party viewer would have a better idea of what my style would be. So what do you think it is? So I'd love to hear. Okay. Tell me about this photo. It'll come up at some point, but I'm looking at sort of like a rogue wave mm -hmm. shot from shore. No, that's shot from the water. It is. Okay. Yeah. So we had just finished surfing and we were swimming back to the boat because this spot is boat access only. And we were swimming back from the boat and I, I think our captain kind of was like oh upset and when when we looked back i could see this lump kind of rolling through and it looked so perfect yeah and i remember i couldn't quite see so i had to because of the water you can see the water line kind of moving there it was kind of in front of me mm -hmm. so i remember having to kick really hard with my fins to try and get above that and oh, okay. i kind of like <laughs> sucked up as much as i could and <sighs> got up got above that water line and got and shot that wave like just in the nick of time this wave uh, looks like you're out in the middle of the ocean somewhere it does eh it's yeah. super cool well we're, we are kind of in the middle of nowhere but i mean shore is like i don't know shore is like kind of adjacent to that so i mean technically you probably could have shot that wave from land but and, I do, I do like the water in the foreground. So it looks yeah, cool. because the water, yeah, because that wave looks like it's behind some water, which sort of adds this mystery of, well, how big is it actually? Um, it could be even bigger behind all that water. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. I think that wave's probably. It's kind of elusive that way. It's got to be like six feet, maybe a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So it's I really solid, like solid that. Wave. That's a beautiful, beautiful photo. Oh, Thank no, you. That's, that's not you. This one, man. This, I, I don't know. This is, this is crazy. This reminds me of a, a sports car kind of burning out on the pavement. You see those pictures of the tire marks from above. Yeah, totally. Um, but, but similarly done with the surfer. So that's I awesome. take, yeah. That's awesome. I love hearing that because it's like, from what I was talking about earlier and how everyone has like a different perspective on things for me, I kind of wrote this photo off. Really? And yeah. I was like, ah, uh, cause I, 
as you can tell, I'm kind of shooting like a slower shutter speed, like the water's a bit blurred and stuff, oh, okay. but I wanted it to be more blurred, but it wasn't. So I remember being like, ah, oh, it's, it's kind of one of those in between things where it's not quite sharp, but it's not quite like a proper speed blur. So I didn't really think much of it, but hearing your perspective on that, you think it looks like, like a car, like doing a burnout or something. That's so awesome. I love hearing other people's perspective okay. on my work. Right. So when you asked me a minute ago, what do you think my style is? I would say for the most part, I see most of your photos is very action oriented. And this is one of them. And I think I, I'm really attracted to this because this is not an, a view you would ever normally see. I mean, you're not ever above a surfer. So this is <laughs> no, you're not. This is very unique and it's thinking, oh wow, so that's what that looks like when I do that on my board, right? Yeah, despite how many people hate drones, mm -hmm. they do open up a lot of creativity. Wow. Yeah. You know, and this shot in particular has allowed me to be a bit more creative and kind of shoot angles that I've only sort of dreamed of without uh, getting okay. a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is this is this Pete here? That's Pete, yeah. Okay. And I thought this picture of Kevin was kind of fun. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. Um, we had a bit of a, a slow morning. The waves weren't that good, and we were kind of just like killing time until until it picked up later. And uh, oh, okay. I thought it'd be fun if I put on the fish eye and everyone kind of got in the pool of where we were staying and kind of messed around with their surfboards and stuff. And uh, yeah, that was just being creative while killing time. Is this the same shoot when he when his uh, cover photo was taken for his Instagram? Because his Instagram photo looks kind of like this. Yeah, this cover you got, of never you got a really good photo. eye, Derek. That yeah. you would that you would notice that. Yes, uh, that was the same same pool session in the backyard uh, of our uh, of our place in Mexico. So I've taken a couple of photography courses, so I'm not, a, I'm not completely out of it. So, but the important thing is you can, I know you can, te you can tell though, you know, you can see the watercolor yeah. and yeah. That's now great. this, now this wave, man, this is a beefy looking wave. Um, when I saw this, it actually kind of reminded me of maybe what inspired the, um, you know, that Santa Cruz hand. It kind of looks like oh like yeah that it kind of does yeah. eh? see again i love hearing your perspective or other people's perspective on my work it's like because i can talk about my work you know all day i can kind of talk about the technical aspect i can talk about what it was like shooting yeah. it i can even talk about what it's like when i look at it but like hearing some like someone else talk about my work is so interesting yeah yeah. Well, so that's, why I, that's the, why I kind of threw that question back at you. That was like, what do you think my style is? Right. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but it's like, no, it's I'm a glad you did. Answer for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, okay. So we've touched on cold comfort a little bit. So these days you're, you're living in Tofino. Um, you've been published now in several magazines. So how did that work, man? Like when you got a, one of your photos in surfer for the first time and then, surfer's journal or whatever it is and and after a while this must become kind of normalized but uh were you just like hitting the fan when you first started getting these deals oh i'm still hitting the fan oh, okay. whenever, whenever i get a photo published it's yeah. like the most unbelievable rush you oh, have okay. no idea it's yeah. so cool yeah even you know from getting the email of an editor being like hey we want this we want to use this photo like that's so gratifying to know yeah. that someone wants to share my work with mm -hmm. their audience and the world especially in print too which is like kind of a dying industry yeah um, and then second just when i get to hold the magazine and like flip through it and see my work it's such a cool feeling yeah. and it hasn't changed from my first published photo to like my most recent one it's so awesome what and was your first published surf photograph my first published surf photo, I think it was in SBC Surf okay. in like 2011 or maybe okay. 2012. And it was the smallest photo from okay. the Ritual Pro. Okay. It was probably like an inch big. And it was kind of in like a mix of everything else. 
like oh, okay. you, like you wouldn't have even been able to tell whose photo that was but uh, i was okay. so stoked that i got yeah. something in sbc surf for the first time yeah got so that was my, that was, yeah. exactly that was my first published photo and i was just like holy cow i did it <laughs> yeah really yeah and what is the photo that you're the most proud of <sighs> that's a hard question mm -hmm. i mean I don't know. I like to think of my photography as like, you know, kind of ongoing. Mm. And I always feel like, you know, if I'm proud of a photo or I'm excited about one, I know that there's going to be like another one or a better one in the future. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know. But you I'm... mentioned earlier, you mentioned earlier about, I think you were talking about Jeremy. Yeah. Had that photo of Pete. Now yeah. I was thinking of a different photo. I was thinking of the photo, I believe it was on Surfer Magazine and it was taken by Jeremy of Pete with the, you know, the trees in the background, but also the snow capped mountains. They've made yeah. pictures of it. Like it's just iconic, right? Like to me- It's very iconic. I've, yeah, sure. I've got a Laird Hamilton poster, but then right next to that is that that peak poster like to me that's like the iconic canadian surfing image so far awesome like, do you do you have something like that or or maybe maybe one day that would be a good like really cool thing to hear if other people saw it that way i suppose yeah for sure i think if i had to pick one photo it's this one I have of Pete, I think I shot it in 2012 or 2013. Okay. So it was like right at the beginning. Still early, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's the funny thing is like I, I took so many photos back then and that one in particular still sort of like holds up to me. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of Pete doing a big air reverse and there's a bunch of wind and then there's rocks in the foreground and snow-capped mountains in the background. And yeah, to this day, that photo still kind of stands up. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't have like the best equipment i think i had like a sort of dinky 50 mil that i bought from like staples uh, or, or like future shop it was like a hundred bucks you know i didn't have like the best equipment at the time and i remember getting that shot and being so psyched and it's interesting because pete like that was the day i met pete mm -hmm. so i feel like getting that photo and meeting pete like that kind of you know it didn't start our working relationship, but at mm. least got my foot in the door of him like knowing who I was. Yeah. So to me, that photo sort of stands out. Um, but I wouldn't say it's like the photo I'm the most proud of by any means, yeah. but it definitely has a special place in my heart for sure. All right. You have to send me that. Let me know which one that is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I read the foreword in your book, Cold Comfort, written by Noah. And uh, really cool story he told there about the first time he met you uh, and you were, you know, photographing him. Did you have any idea who he was when you were taking photos of him that first time? I had no idea who he was. Wow. I was so <laughs> you know, and uh, I just remember going up on the rocks and, you know, taking photos of this guy. And he was ripping, right? And yeah. Yeah. I, you know, that, that. This guy it, is crazy talented. Wow. He's so that, talented. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it was, yeah, it was an interesting experience because I remember that uh, interaction really stood out to me because mm -hmm. then like, you know, we kind of like reintroduced on the beach afterwards and we kind of walked up the beach and I remember him being like, I remember cluing in that he had won the Rip Curl Pro that year. And I was like, oh, okay. oh this guy, like, and it's interesting that when I asked him to write the foreword, he also had like an interesting memory of that interaction because mm. you know it, how 10 years later we've done so many trips together and we've worked together for so long so it's kind of fun how those first meetings still kind of stand out yeah yeah and he, i was so stoked that he agreed to write my foreword that was awesome because he's amazing. he's such a talented writer and i remember listening to your podcast when you mm. had him on as a guest and i can't remember if he like talked about his writing at all but that was something he doesn't really, he doesn't talk about it is enough because we've done so yeah. many like trips together where, where he'll write a story and I'll provide the photos for like a magazine and his yeah. words are just so beautiful and yeah. the way he describes things are so vivid and he has such a good mm -hmm. memory. So yeah. it's funny you say that because as I've been doing this podcast, I've been going through my entire collection of uh, SBC surf magazines and so, you know, I've went through every one. I think it's there from like 2007 or something up. And yeah, exactly what you're saying, man. 
you know, at the time when I was reading those magazines as they were coming out, I didn't know Noah the way I do now. Because now as I'm looking at these magazines and reflecting, I'm like, holy smokes, he is, he's like a damned author. That's like a <laughs> side job of his that he doesn't mention. And you're right, he's got a very uh, descriptive, very interesting style. It's, it's, yeah, good, it's, it's like, good reading, yeah. It's like descriptively poetic. It's so, yeah. it's so pleasant to read. I really enjoy mm -hmm. it. Yeah, the way that he describes the waves and the conditions I thought was really neat, yeah. So who are some of the people that you really enjoy photographing then? Well, I really enjoy shooting Pete DeVries. Mm -hmm. um, we've been shooting together for so long and uh, he actually used to be my neighbor. That's kind of how we ended up shooting together. Oh, was, uh, yeah. yeah, he was, when we started shooting, he was like, hey, I'll pick you up. Where do you live? And I was like, oh, <laughs> Black Bear Lane. And he was like, are you serious? <laughs> it's like two houses away from his. Oh my God. Yeah, but again, I was too like shy to like, say, hey, we're neighbors, but then, yeah. You, just, oh, you like, actually knew you were neighbors? Oh, well, I'd be sitting in my house drinking coffee and I would see him walk his dog and I'd be like, oh, oh my God, Pete. hilarious, yeah. Yeah, so I really like working with Pete. We've been kind of working together for so long and yeah. he, he's helped my career so much and yeah. just trying to figure out how the industry works and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy shooting, you know, Noah, as we mentioned. Uh, we have a really great working relationship there. Um, Michael Darling as well. I've he was kind of the first guy I started shooting that had a sticker on his board, you know? So oh, okay. we, we go way back. Um, yeah. yeah. And you know, everyone in town is, is so talented. So I, I like shooting everybody for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You've done quite a bit with Matea as well, haven't you? Yeah. I've shot, I've shot yeah. with Matea quite a few times. Yeah. yeah. Now, are you going to the Olympics if they happen? <laughs> I don't know. That's a great question. I don't think yeah. so, but no, I kind of okay. want to. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd have to talk with a CSA about that and see if yeah. they want to get a photographer on board to come kind of document the team and stuff. Um, yeah. Like if, if that happens, I, if I got the opportunity, I would definitely do it. Um, so right you now, are I, not on CSA Surf Canada's payroll then? No, no, I'm not. Okay. Do, yeah. do they, I take it they probably contract you though? Time they time? have contracted yeah. okay. contracted me yeah like i went to um i went to japan with them and then mm. they've done uh trial events and contests here in town and i've been uh yeah contracted to to shoot the events and stuff but uh yeah it's pretty open-ended so what are your some of your dreams and aspirations now with photography where are you hoping to go or oh. better yet where are we gonna see it man you know, that's the thing with photography or like anything you're passionate about is like, I would say if you asked me like a few years ago, what my dream was, it would be to come out with a book. Yeah. And now I'm coming out with a book and I'm like, okay, so, I've, so that's done. What's my next sort of dream or aspiration? I don't know. I think like getting the cover of Surfer's Journal would be a dream come true. Yeah, covers. Um, Have you been on a cover <laughs> yet? Have you done a cover? Yeah, I've had a, I've had a few covers for oh, sure, okay. but but not on the Surfer's Journal. Surfer's no. Journal, ah, um, the Holy yeah, Grail. I, yeah, exactly, the Holy Grail of surfing. I think that would be so cool to get the yeah. cover of the Surfer's Journal, but um, or even like getting a feature in the Surfer's Journal would be amazing because mm. every photo I've had in there has kind of been a one-off or just like a spread or like a little photo here and there. So it'd be cool to get something more significant with yeah. them. But it looks like, you know, you're a Canadian surf photographer, but you've also got some attention outside of uh, our borders. I, I saw an article written about you by the Inertia. Mm -hmm. And so you have been in Surfer and, and some of those other magazines. So, Yeah, I would say I have like a, a little bit of international recognition. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really the right person to say that, but I remember emailing with an edit, like a new editor and he's from like South Africa and I was a okay. huge fan of his work. He's a photographer as well. And I remember sort of introducing myself and coming up with pitching some ideas and he was like, Oh, Marcus, huge fan of your work, dude. Like, <laughs> like to be working with you. And I was like, what do you mean huge wow. fan of my work? You know? Um, yeah. and I think that's, that's the power of Instagram too, right? It's yeah. like anyone can access your work. It's yeah. pretty phenomenal. That's rewarding, though, when your icons are sort of being like, hey, welcome to the club, man. You deserve yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't know if I'm in the club per se, but I, oh, uh, I, think I appreciate are, positive feedback from, from uh, 
from people who I, I admire their work. Yeah. So. I think you made it past the doorman, dude. No problem. Well, you would be the one to determine that, not me. Yeah, it's like yeah. I, I, despite all my quote unquote success, I yeah. still feel like I'm just the guy shooting his friends. <laughs> surfing, so tell me, know? tell me about your book, man. Hot, hot discomfort. <laughs> hot discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> I cold, mean, cold comfort. Yeah. It's funny. I got some feedback on the title. Someone was like, I don't understand cold comfort. <laughs> Generally cold isn't very comfortable. Can you explain? Like this was an actual DM uh, and I was like, I think that's the point, man. <laughs> it's yeah. just like ironic. It's um, a surfing book. Hello. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a surfing book and it's, it was interesting making it cause like you said, my style is very surf action oriented, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to make the book super like surf porn, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just air reverses and barrels yeah. and turns. And it's, it's, it was so hard coming up with a balance of like, having nice landscapes in there and, you know, beautiful portraits and, you know, abstract waves just to kind of like tie in with everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good mixture of basically my life's work along with like a bunch of photos that are still unpublished. Mm. Like they haven't been on Instagram. They haven't been in magazines. So I'm really excited to kind of oh. have a platform to put those out in. Oh, okay. Um, Cause I just feel like print is so valuable and holding something and turning a page and looking at it is just like yeah well it's gratifying for me so i hope it's gratifying for other people yeah like, absolutely to see a photo that inspires you that you've never seen before like in a book or a magazine mm -hmm. as opposed to scrolling with your thumb on like a two inch screen i think there's just there's more to that so i'm really excited for sure. about it. yeah man the old the old days of photo albums yeah totally <laughs> The old days of just typing in a photographer's website, www. Dot. It's like, yeah, really? Yeah. Um, oh, I lost my point. I was bringing up your photos because I wanted to say something. But, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, because you've got photos here that aren't just surfing. I mean, you got this really awesome one of an eagle flying over the water. Um, you did this one photo, man, where you got Pete. He's kind of bending over like this, and he's looking directly at you in the lens. That is a cool photo. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like getting those. Um, that's kind of my style with portraits is I try not to make them too posed. Mm -hmm. And I like kind of getting those moments where, like, they don't expect to get their photo taken. Because yeah. I feel like you can really tell a lot about a person and their personality and who they are with their natural sort of face, oh, you know, okay. smiling or knowing they're getting their photo taken. Yeah. So yeah. I, th I think when shooting um, portraits, that's kind of what I go for. Are you just pulling up some photos here? Yeah, I'm tr trying this whole screen sharing. I really apologize, man, about my Oh, no, it's all good. Like, like you said, video. you're going to ed edit it and cut it out. So yeah. it's all better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and this photo, I really like this photo you got of, uh, Gualiga? Gualiga, yeah. Gualiga, yeah, doing that. It's got uh, like a wood. Uh, like yeah, he made he made that seat. He made that cedar surfboard and painted it himself. Oh, that's yeah, nice. that was when we were uh, up in Haida Gwaii. And some of these toes on the nose shots you got too are incredible. Thank you. Yeah, that that would be Andy Jones. He is so talented. He is oh, such okay. a phenomenal longboarder. It's uh, it's. Quite amazing to watch it looks so effortless for him eh just like it's... hanging out on the front yeah he's got such style and he's so talented and he's so humble yeah i, yeah. I really like shooting with andy so how did it come about man um having a book made did someone approach you did you explore it like because i can't even think correct me if i'm wrong but does Jeremy have a book or Kyler or any of those guys? Because I can't think of another. Yeah. yeah, okay. Jeremy has a book. It came out in 2015, I think. And oh, okay. it's called This Is Nowhere. Good oh, okay. plug for Jeremy's book. There you go, Jer. Perfect. Right on. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'll have to check that yeah. out too. So I feel like it's actually really good timing because his book has been out for almost five or six years mm. now. Yeah. And there hasn't been another book made like from a photographer since then, or like a surf photographer, I should say. Yeah. In Tofino, um, especially. In, in Tofino. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited to kind of put that out there. And yeah, it's, they actually approached me.
which is the most bizarre scenario anyone could ever imagine. <laughs> what an honor um, that must have been, though. Yeah, I, I, they just they sent they got in touch and sent me an email and they were like, "Hey, we love your work. Have you ever thought about making a book?" And I was like, "Yeah, duh." <laughs> Dream come true, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's been a long time coming. Like that e- that initial email was like two years ago, I think. Oh. Okay. So this has been a long time coming, and to you know to be like a month away from it being released is so exciting. So have you? Is any of your photography that you've done recently done purposely for the book or? Was it just an archive of your portfolio, basically? Well, it started out as an archive. Mm. Like that was my plan was we had a deadline for the photos. And then we had probably six months after that deadline before we kind of went into the initial phase of like design and stuff. Okay. And in the, in those six months, I shot so many great photos, not specifically for the book, but just in general, we had a really mm. good winter. Um, yep. And I kind of had to hit them up and say, Hey, I've got some great shots. Like we got to put these in before the deadline hits. So mm, yeah, yeah, there's a lot, there's quite a few recent photos in there as well. Oh, okay. And it's, it was such an interesting process trying to select the images, especially trying to select newer images. Mm. So like for me, my work kind of like certain photos stand the test of time where other photos sort of like fizzle out in my mind. So by having like recent photos, trying to incorporate those into the mix as well, yeah, it was tough because I would have to really look at it and think, okay, is this photo cool now? Yeah. Or is it going to be cool in 10 years? Like, you okay. know, so that was really hard for me. But at the same time as the artist, I find you're also very, you're your worst critic. So oh, yeah, for a sure. photo that was rocking 10 years ago, and might still rock, but you think it's dog shit by this time. <laughs> but someone else thinks, man, that's a great photo. So you got to gotta kind of balance that too. Like, how do you gauge your talent? Like, it's, it's all about growth, right? Yeah, for sure. And it's, I think there's a really fine line between, you know, being like hypercritical of your own work mm-hmm. and just sort of being able to step back and be like, okay, this is good enough, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, because one thing I've learned over the years is that like, you know, you spend so much time trying to make the right decision that you don't even end up making one. So yeah. sometimes you just need to make the good enough decision and see yeah. how that goes. And generally it's perfectly fine. And yeah. that's kind of how I felt with selecting all these images for the book is like, you know, I just had to be like, you know what, that's good enough. People will probably like it. Yeah. Everyone else around me likes it. So that'll, that'll do. Well, the book looks great, man. I've uh, had the benefit of seeing a, an electronic version of it. I, I haven't held the real thing yet, but I was super impressed, man, to see all your stuff in one place. I think it tells a beautiful story of surfing on the West Coast and also the the progress of your very still young and vibrant career. I'm pumped to, to know you and to see where this is going to take you and and all the good work ahead for you, man. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Appreciate that. Where can people, where can people find that book or pick it up, get a copy? Yeah. So if you go onto the publishing website, which is uh, Rocky mountain books, if you go onto their website, they've got this great kind of platform that sets you up so you can order it through any local bookstore in North America. Because their their big thing is awesome. They really just want to promote shopping local and supporting local bookstores, which as we've talked about, print is like a dying industry and everyone orders their stuff from Amazon. So that's a really... I wasn't going to say the A word. Is it going to (laughs) be available on... uh... It is going to be available on Amazon. Yeah. Um, It's funny (laughs) because someone just hit me up in Japan that was like, how do I buy your book? And I was like or your local bookstore or Amazon, if that's convenient. Yeah. So I do yeah. feel like they, they've, they've covered both bases. The convenience of Amazon yeah. with the integrity of shopping local at your local bookstore. So Yeah, that's great. You, you, get, you get the choice, which is yeah. awesome. Well, because um, in some countries or whatever, they might not have that other option. Amazon yeah, exactly. Have, so, yeah. 
So it's it's great for now. And um, but I if think you're I'll... in Canada or the U.S., you can order it from Rain for it. What was it called? Rain Rocky Mountain Books. Rocky Mountain Books is the publishing company. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there there's a link on my in my website. My website is marcuspaladino.com. Okay. Are they a Canadian company or what's their yeah. deal? They're a Canadian company. They uh, I think they're ba they were based in Alberta and they've okay. recently expanded to the West Coast. Okay. Yeah, hence uh, why they're trying to get more West Coast uh, imagery yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And hence the Rocky Mountains. Exactly. Right on, right yeah. on. So cold comfort, pick it up at your local bookstore. What's the price tag on that guy? Like, It's $45. $45. A great price, $45 Canadian. Yeah, for beautiful color, glossy photos, good coffee table book. Yeah, it's a great coffee table book. It's big too. It's 320 pages. So it's wow. uh, it's solid. It'll be a good paperweight. <laughs> wow, absolutely, man. That, that is cool. I have to say that's a dream of mine too, having a, a published book. That and an action figure, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Love to get an yeah. action figure of me one day. Yeah, I could just see it right now. Marcus Palladino action figure with the little camera housing and <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got a couple of friends that have three D printers, so maybe uh they could do me a solid and make one for me. I'll send Sweet it to you. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Love it, man. So hey dude, before I let you go, this is perma stoked after all. Mm -hmm. When you're not out taking photos, man, and you're not out surfing, what else keeps you stoked? I know you're engaged, right? Yeah, I was gonna say my fiance keeps me pretty stoked. Um, Super she, exciting, man. Yeah, yeah, she she's in med school right now, so she oh, lives okay. out in uh, Prince George at uh, UNBC. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're kind of doing the long distance thing, but she is writing her finals next week, and then we'll mm. we'll be back in Tofino for the summer. So I'm I am perma stoked to have her back. That'll be great. Nice. What are the wedding deets? We haven't made any wedding details yet just because oh, of COVID. Yeah. yeah, COVID's definitely, COVID and med school, that combination has mm. definitely put a, put a wrench in the situation. So yeah. I think we'll, we'll start hammering out some details this summer as restrictions open up and med school becomes a bit more clear, right? So she just finished yeah. her first year. Um, yeah. So there was a lot of uh, questions around like, you know, the scheduling of that and stuff. Right on, man. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think I was... I believe I was on your Facebook probably, and I saw that when you proposed to her, you actually had a photographer hiding in the bushes somewhere. <laughs> nah, we just set. I just set up a camera and put a timer on it. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, pretty okay. good, right? Yeah, it was yeah, all lined up nicely. We that's were, even yeah. more impressive, to be honest. Yeah, with you. totally. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that was completely like unimprovised. That was the real deal. Nah, we set it up. Oh, okay. I proposed, it's funny. I proposed, and then it was this beautiful, amazing, special moment. And it was, it was emotional. It was great. And then as soon as we kind of like came back to our senses, she's like, "Cause that's when like the sun was setting." And yeah. she was like, "Let's take a photo." And I'm like, "Hell yeah!" So we quickly wow. set up the camera, and I just like proposed again. So nice. Those photos are extremely <laughs> convincing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> we were like, nice, <laughs> this is way better. Because I don't yeah. think I could have had the timing to like, you know, it's it's funny as a photographer, I actually don't really like taking photos of myself. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. for me to be like, hey, hon, let's slow. Yeah, so if I, if I had set her, if I had set up the camera and been like, hey, hon, we should go over there and like take a cute photo together, she would have known something was up because I oh, never yeah. get my photo yeah. taken. So you had yeah, to do it, it after the fact. Exactly. It's quite right. ironic that I'm a photographer and I do not like getting my photo taken, but maybe that's common. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's kind of like what I just told you about the podcast, you know, not listening right. to other podcasts or the whole uh, story of the shoemaker, right? It's like, you know, the auto mechanic who's got a crappy car or <laughs> the carpenter who lives in a shack, you know, it's just, it's just kind of the way it is. Like when you're doing something professionally sometimes you you go all in it for other people that when it comes to you it's not as much a priority so yeah you don't totally. you don't need fancy photos of yourself you're no i i know what i look like it's fine yeah <laughs> yeah right on that. yeah anywhere people can find you i suppose people can connect with you online instagram and facebook or yeah people can find me on instagram it's, my handle is just at marcus paladino so if you have any technical technical questions about Surf photography, please hit me up. 
Um, I also have a website. It's just my name, marcuspalladino.com. Super simple. And uh, my Prince and website. And that's Marcus with a C, not That's a Marcus K. with a C. Yeah, Marcus with a no C. No Ks. Marcus and, with a uh, C. My Prince website is just marcuspalladinoprince.com. So if you want to get something to hang on the wall, then that's the place to do it. Okay, I was looking at that. Now, do those come framed? Not yet, but that's, oh, the, okay. that's the next step. Is uh, I've, I've got a local framer I'm talking with, and I'm kind of trying to coordinate my printer and this framer together yeah. um, so I can offer that service, uh, which will be coming in the next few months, hopefully. But uh, yeah, all of the photos are unframed just on fine art paper or as a canvas. So. Okay, right on, right on. Well, hey, there was your plug, man. Hey, there you go. Hopefully get a couple print sales out of it. And I want to know, because I've been uh, out of BC, I moved in last July. So I've been out of the province for a little while now. And as the summer approaches, I'm starting to think of the Tofino trip that I'm not going on and all the great Tofino food that I won't be eating. <laughs> so just to make me jealous, man, what is your, what is your vice out there? Are you a... <laughs> Are you a taco fino guy? Are you wild side grill? Where do you spend all your money? Ooh, taco fino and wild side are definitely go-tos. I live right yeah. down the road from both of them. So yeah. that, those are, those are both staples for sure. But for me, I'm a Gary's kitchen guy. Gary's kitchen. <laughs> now, where it's, is that? It's right beside the liquor store. It's this tiny little hole in the wall and they make the best Chinese food in town. Really? Wow. Yeah, okay. I guess kitchen. that's a more of a local secret then rather yeah, than a it's, touristy one. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a little, a little local spot. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my favorite place to, to eat out if I'm just getting takeaway, just <laughs> grab some Now Chinese. the last few times I've been there, my wife introduced me to this place that I'm hooked on their sub sandwiches. Um, oh God, what is it called? I'm thinking it has like a, like a lighthouse in the branding or something it's on the oh that uh, little road that goes can. to red can red can gourmet, gourmet. Yeah. love red can freaking so delicious yeah anybody yeah. listening going to going to tofino you want a good sandwich go to red can yeah you want chinese food you're saying go to gary's kitchen go to gary's yeah and if you want a fish taco go no further than taco fino that there you is, go. That is where it's at. But at the uh, Wild Side Grill, I've got to give them some love. I'm a big fan of the oyster burger. Ooh, nice. Good choice. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the uh, the pulled pork ciabatta. Oh, nice. Um, I think when I first moved to Tofino, I had like no money, mm. but all of my roommates and stuff were like, oh, we're all going to Wild Side. Let's get a burger. And I'm like, sure. So. I get there and the pulled pork ciabatta was the cheapest thing on the menu. And I was like, uh, I'll just get that. And I've been hooked on that for 10 yeah. years. Every time wow. I go there, I'm like, mm, pulled pork ciabatta. Yeah. I've yeah never, it's, I've it's my ever, favorite thing. Yeah. Well, you probably don't even know what the other stuff tastes like. <laughs> every, every time I get something else, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good, but it's no pulled pork ciabatta. Right. Uh, <laughs> and as a, as a 10 year to Fishin local, what's your surf shop of choice? Um, I go to storm surf shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, all the surf shops are awesome. Yeah. Uh, Live to surf and long beach surf shop are yeah. great. And even relic and Yuki is so rad, but yeah. yeah, long beach or it's not, um, storm surf shop is kind of where that's where all my friends used to work. Oh, and okay. I actually worked there for a summer. Oh, okay. so it's like, yeah. I don't know. They're, they're family there. Right. On. And do you do some photography for them exclusively or, uh, I did back in the day. Oh, okay. um, especially, especially while I was working there, um, Alistair Fernie, the owner would always kind of like run yep. ideas off me and he was super supportive and kind of like helping me start my career as well and giving me opportunities. So yeah, I'm very yeah. grateful for, for those and, guys. And uh, Monty had a baby recently, I believe. He did. He had a baby, uh, got married. He, he opened his own store. Yeah. Things are going great for Monty. Oh, is he not, is he outside of storm now? He's outside of storm now. Yeah. Him and oh, his wife. What's his store? Him and his wife opened Kook and Kid, which is a children's store. Oh, is it yeah. like a, is it a surf shop or? No, it's not a surf shop. It's just like, it's that one thing in Tofino that they needed, which is like a place where, pe where young families can get things for their kids and their babies and stuff like that. 
Kook and Kids? Kook and Kid. Or Kid and Kid. Cool. I'll have to I check that I, out. I haven't popped in. They like just opened, but I've been meaning to go uh, in there and say hi. Check out the joint. Right on. I yeah. will check that out, man. I had no idea. Marcus Palladino, my friend. Dude, it has been awesome having you on Permastoke, the podcast, Canada's number one surfing podcast. And of course, Marcus Palladino, one of Canada's best surf photographers has been on the show dude it has been an honor man thank you for being here bro and you are too nice to me thank you for having me you are very welcome bro i wish you all the success man with with your book and uh yeah let me know how the book sales go and and if there's anything i can do to help promote or, or push that book i certainly will on my end as well all right much appreciated my friend yeah, man. Marcus, stay stoked, dude. Woo!